Come stop and take a trip down on my block Where you see hidden potential, young minds sharper than Ginsu And ain't afraid to speak they mind if they got something against you We standing with you, we tackle issues like civic pride Hate will cease to exist, let's put our differences aside From my side to your side, from Dutch Town to South Side From Penrose to North Side, from Benton Park to Old North The West End, the West Side, we blessed when we step out We stand down, rise up, stand together, wise up. This is Stitchcast Studio, produced by St. Louis Story Stitchers in St. Louis, Missouri. Or Stitchcast sits down with Emma Clues and Shauna C. Daniels of Great Rivers Greenway for a conversation about the Brickline Greenway Project in this live episode of Stitchcast Studio. They say who that, but you already knew that. That beat them story stitches. Story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches. Story stitches. Hello, everybody under the sound of my voice. I want to thank you for tuning in to an episode of Stitch Cast Studio. I'm your host, Brandon Lewis, accompanied by a couple members of our Stitch Cast. How you feeling, bro? Good. You're... Yeah. Today actually marks the last live podcast of this season. Oh. I know, right? It's so sad. It's so sad. Until next year. But we all, each year, we like to do a podcast uh, centering around the great outdoors. And we actually have two representatives from Great Rivers Greenway who are doing some really big things. We have some really big plans for the city. And we, we'd like to talk to y'all a little bit about those plans. We actually have Shaughnessy and Emma with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Can y'all clap it up for them? Thanks for having us. Thank y'all so much for being here. So uh, let's let's just uh, dive right into it. You guys are with Great Rivers Greenway. Is there anything about working here that, or working with Great Rivers Greenway, that that gives you a sense of fulfillment? What what's your what's your passion for doing what you do? Well, I've been with Rivers Greenway for six years, and one of the things that's been really important to me is that the organization is committed to engagement. They're committed to community. They're committed to making certain that people have a voice in their projects and the process. So that's what made me really excited about being at Great Rivers Greenway, and that's what makes me want to stay. Beautiful. Now, Beautiful. Emma's been there a little bit longer than me, so... I have been there 10 years and mm. I would say that's very much in the top, my top three as well. I will say just to offer something different. I also just really love that we are delivering something to the community. They can see our work. They can go, you know, walk on the greenways and experience them. And so we help to build that civic trust by delivering on what we say we're going to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when, so, so clearly both of you are, are, are committed to what you're doing being our six and 10 years. When you first started, did you know that this was going to be a long term thing for you or was it kind of a serendipitous moment? I don't know that I knew like how long I would be there for mm -hmm. sure. You know, in my past jobs before that, I had been places like two, three years, you know, not 10 <laughs> before yeah. that. Um, so I always just kind of, you know, go with my gut and see what's working. And this is still nailing it. So beautiful. I'm thrilled to be here, but I didn't know what to expect when I got here. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm the one that typically has a longer term relationship with my employers. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I've been with the same employer for, you know, nine, 10 years. But I think that with Great Rivers Greenway and any organization, really, I find that if it doesn't align with what's important to me personally, it's harder to be there. And this aligns sure. up. So. Sure, sure. That's beautiful. I actually feel the same way about my um, about where I'm at at St. Louis Story Stitches. Not that we're talking about St. Louis Story Stitches or anything. <laughs> we are but, now. I like it. You know, while we're yeah. here. Yeah. While we're here. Uh, <laughs> yes, I've, I've been here about six, seven years. And this, this is probably the longest this is the longest relationship I've had with a with a job like ever. That's awesome. Like ever, I couldn't imagine being at my past jobs for no. <laughs> for, nah, nah, it just wasn't gonna happen. But that's beautiful. So Great Rivers Greenway doing some really big things with the Brickline project and with uh, Hold On My Tracks. Uh, let's start with Brickline. Um, can you guys tell us in your own words uh, what is the Brickline project? So I'll start. So um, the Brickline Greenway is a project that's going to connect four of our major parks in St. Louis. Um, it's going to connect Forest Park to the Gateway Arch National Park and then Fairground Park to Tower Grove Park. 
Um, this is a transformational project, a transformational infrastructure project that's going to bring about 10 or so miles of Greenway to the city of St. Louis and connect 14 St. Louis city neighborhoods. So it's really exciting because this Greenway is going to transverse the city. It's going to go across the city and cut through lots of different neighborhoods. And it's going to take on sort of the character and the flavor of the neighborhoods that it's in, but still bring that typical uh, Greenway feel. Mm -hmm. um, and this is infrastructure that we don't really have a lot of in the city of St. Louis. So this is going to allow for safer places to walk and, and to bike and to just to get around generally. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. And I'll just add that in addition to the path itself, then we're going to add like trees and plants and public art and then see what the Greenway can do to be a catalyst for equitable economic development along the way. So if there are things that the neighbors want to help fill in, maybe where there's a vacant lot, what can the Greenway do to help encourage that kind of stuff too? Wow. Wow. And this is a, what, 10 year project? Uh, how, how long is this project going to take? It kind of got started in 2016, 2017, and it should be done in 2030. Uh, how was how was how was this birthed? Where did, where did, where did this come from? The idea of a greenway that was connecting east-west has been on the book since before we even existed from the 90s. And it was called Shoto Greenway. And the idea was to connect Forest Park to the Arch. But then about 2016, different partners were coming together and saying, hey, what are we ever going to do something about that? You know, what would that, what would it take? What would it look like? And we did an international design competition. So we opened it up for people from all over the world to weigh in and give us ideas. And we did a ton of community engagement alongside. And what we heard from people was, East-West connector is great, but you got to go North-South. That's where everybody lives, right? Like people, the neighborhoods are North and South. And a lot of the jobs and schools might be in that central chunk, but you need both. And so then it kind of really grew into, we renamed it. Um, so it's because no, it's no longer just on Shoto Avenue. And that was confusing. And Shoto also enslaved folks. It's a little bit hard to say and spell if you're not fluent in yeah. French, like some of our podcast hosts here are. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we put out a call. We got a thousand ideas and... Brickline was the name that was chosen to really be more representative of all the neighborhoods in the city, which all have brick, right? And so that that hardy, strong, gritty brick and the green plants along the way was sort of the combo that, that won out. So that's a little bit about how it got going. Gotcha. And engagement's been in critical to that process the entire time. So, you know, yep. we started the project out just listening and making certain that we were hearing from community what was important to them what they wanted this project to be more than just a path. They wanted this to be something that was really transformational and something that was very inspirational. And as Emma mentioned, the project went from one route to a completely different route. And, you know, community members have been just critical to the process the entire time. I want to uh, back up a little bit. So one of the questions that we had to answer kind of, or that we kind of had to figure out early on in our research uh, was what exactly is a greenway itself? Yes. So uh, can you uh, guys talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that? Absolutely. So I always kind of like to think of it as having four things. So it's got the trail itself. This is a paved pathway. Again, you can walk, run, ride a bike, push a stroller, roll a wheelchair, fully accessible. Ideally, even separated for people walking and biking so that you've got more spaces available. And then, so that's one thing. <laughs> you've got the green, the greenery along the way. So it might be trees, it might be plants, whatever we have room to put in along the way, conservation projects to better the environment. And then the third thing is the amenities. So we're talking benches, bike racks, there might be a restroom, drinking fountain, there might be a little playground or some a splash pad or something along the way too. Um, and then last but not least, all the destinations that you're connecting to. So, you know, whether that be schools, churches, community centers, employers, transportation, other, you know, train or bus. Uh, and so I think of it as like trail plus. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I call them active spaces for people and places. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I like to tell people that greenways are really what you make them. They're for the user and about the user. So, you know, some pe people use greenways in different ways. Some people sure. use them to train for a marathon. Some people use them just to enjoy nature. Some people use them to get to work or it's get exactly transportation. So it depends on what the user is using them for. And that's kind of how they can be defined. No. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You already know what time it is. Time for another Stitchcast Studio Arts in Lou. That's right. It's time to pick the city up. This week, we have a Story Stitches original spoken word piece. Recalling the traveler's appearance brought a vividness to memory that made it almost tangible. He was an enigmatic figure, his presence as profound as the prairie itself. An ebony man, cloaked in gray, seemed less like a person and more like a part of the landscape. 
a manifestation of the prairie soul. His cloak a tapestry of shadows and light fluttered with every step, as if whispering secrets only the earth could understand. The cane he carried not just a tool, but an extension of his being, connecting him to the earth with every touch. It seemed ancient, as if it had seen many seasons pass and held stories of the prairie within its grain. A necklace of gold on his hands glittered with the sunlight. Each piece a tapestry of to the wisdom he carried. The ring on his left finger, simple yet elegant, was like a silent vow to the land he walked upon. But his eyes, green like the heart of the prairie, that captivated me the most. They held the depths of storms, yet there was a tranquility to them, a calmness that spoke of the balance between nature's fury and its peace. His hair and dreadlocks cascaded down his back like vines in a lush forest, every strand a story, a journey through time. His voice deep and resonant seemed to echo the rumbling distant thunder on the serene night. Every word he spoke vibrated through the air, carrying the weight of the prairie's wisdom. As he walked, the environment responded to his presence. A green of grass and leaves deepened into the shades of emerald, violent and alive. The skies above us was a canvas of Ezer. Dancing in the light of the sun, the ground beneath our feet vibrated subtly, as if the earth itself was humming a melody, a song of ages known only to those who truly listen. Surrounded by this symphony of nature, I felt an awakening within me, a connection to the prairie that went beyond the physical. It was as if the traveler this mysterious figure was a key that unlocked the deeper, hidden layers of this sacred place and of myself. And his presence was not just a visitor to the prairie, but was a part of it, intrinsically woven in its tapestry of life and energy. That's that piece. That's fire, that's fire. Obviously, I got more questions, but I do want to open the floor for a... Uh... Our other podcast is to ask questions. Don't ask as well. me in French. Um, no, you can try French. Gonna, I know I'm a little French. I was just about to say that. <laughs> um, but um, considering that you have um, stuff going from north and south to east to west, what is the plan going into yep. these different neighborhoods? Because there are bigger problems in different areas of the city. So, what is the? Do you guys have a plan for that? And if so, what is it? So the first plan <laughs> was listen, engagement and listening, mm -hmm. um, making certain that we understand from community what the issues actually are, mm -hmm. um, and then using that information to work with community to identify the solutions. We don't claim to have all the answers. We don't claim to, to know all the solutions. So we are working with community to, to uh, determine what those solutions can be. And we can give some examples. So for... For folks that are concerned about, for instance, like your physical safety on a greenway, um, because, you know, some of the sidewalks right now are maybe not well maintained. And so people are worried about a new project that might also have problems, you know, that if folks are forced to like go use their wheelchair in the street because the sidewalks are all messed up. So we talked a lot about how we want to build something that's smooth and accessible, but also that we will continue to make sure that it's maintained and taken care of, um, that those trees are maintained, those types of things. So part of it is just that physical safety. A lot of what we're going to do is a lot of the roads in St. Louis are really overbuilt. And so if you think about how it feels to drive on Market Street, where it's six or seven lanes, or maybe North Grand, where it's six or seven lanes, it feels kind of like a freeway, right? And so you feel like you can go faster because it's so big. So a lot of what we're doing is like reimagining the road to work for everyone, narrowing that down to make more space for people walking or running or, you know, pushing a stroller on the side. But you've got shorter distances to cross across the street now. You've got crosswalks in there. You've got what they call curb bump outs so that you can be like seen by the cars when you're waiting to go across the street. So some of it is plans for physical safety like that. Even things like you know, don't plant really tall hedges all along the way where somebody could be hiding right behind and you don't feel safe if you're walking by yourself. So some of those plans, again, listening directly, like Chauncey said, I know we sound like a broken record about listening to people, but it is for real what really guides everything. So some of it is those physical pieces of how we design the Greenway and that's part of the plans. And then part of it is also just the people. 
So the more people that are out there, the yep. safer everyone's going to be, right? The more comfortable you are, the more welcome you feel. So not only do we want people to use it, but we want programs and events and maybe walking tours and different things going on. So the spaces are active and vibrant and then people feel comfortable and welcome. So one thing that I was curious about, uh, going back to the timeline, what does from 2024 to 2030 look like? When does construction start? And what do things look like from that point on? So we build in, in phases. So we don't anticipate that we would build the entire stretch of 10 plus miles of Greenway at one particular time. We actually have two segments that are already are open for people to enjoy. Uh, one is at the Cortex Metrolink station up to Sarah. And then there's another right outside the MLS stadium, which is only about two blocks. But we build in these smaller chunks. We're doing all the planning and design, and then we're rolling that construction out in, in different phases. Some of that is because of funding and the timeline for funding, which might may dictate when we can actually build. Like for a federal grant, if we get money from the federal government, government yay but also very specific timeline so that sometimes determines when it'll be exactly so during that 20 you know well let's see that's six years six years six years that's six only days. six years that's really not a long time <laughs> um and so in that in that time we're doing we're again doing a lot of engagement we are talking to community about public art and working with artists and determining where we might be able to have some temporary installations and um, and things like that. So there's activity that's happening. And then again, you'll start to see construction will, will roll out in different places at different times. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, let's talk about Hodemont Tracks a little bit. What's the difference between the Hodemont Track project and Brickline? So the Greenway on the Tracks is a project that runs along the old Hodemont Streetcar Line, mm -hmm. um, which travels from Hodemont Avenue on the west end all the way through seven different cities, city of St. Louis neighborhoods to Enright and Spring in the Covenant Blue Grand Center neighborhood. So, um, it, again, another east-west yeah, east west connection. I, I turned a map around in my head for a second there, y'all. It's like a, um, an east west connection that is using uh, what is now an alley. It used to be, again, a streetcar line, then it turned into a, a bus route, um, which was vacated by, by state some years ago. So, What's different is, let me see if I can say this in, in a way that makes sense. But what this allows us to do is really connect those seven neighborhoods with some beautification of something that's already existing. Mm -hmm. um, and are these projects to be carried out simultaneously? So they are. Uh, we're doing planning engagement for, for both Brickline and, and uh, Greenway on the tracks. And it's interesting because even with uh, Greenway on the tracks, we've been doing the engagement in those seven neighborhoods since 2018. About. That's right. But they're, they've got different funding streams and uh, they're just sort of in different places. But the hope is that we will be able to continue to advance the design of those pro of both projects so that they, you know, that we can see some, <laughs> some uh, transformation by 2030 on both. And is the completion of the Hold On My Track project, uh, is, is it expected to be completed by 2030 as well? I don't think we have a specific timeline yet. Gotcha. It's still, it's earlier in its phases, so it, and it will also be built in chunks. So it could be, but we don't know for sure yet. It's still being figured out. Still to gotcha. be determined. What's interesting about those two projects is that they they intersect at Spring and Enright. Mm. So there is a section in Covenant Blue Grand Center where two greenways intersect, which makes yeah. it a really special place. And that's right at the corner of uh, Cardinal Ritter uh, College Prep. Wow. Wow. Honest. Honest. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, Cardinal <laughs> Right there, yeah. like a couple yeah. blocks from yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's close. It's close. Okay, that's fire. That's fire. So some, yeah. some of these greenways are going to run through neighborhoods. Uh, do y'all feel like going outside and seeing a greenway um would uh give you more of a sense of pride mm -hmm. in the neighborhood you live in um i mean yeah um especially right now with this younger generation like they like COVID, you, the covid babies like they all they know was inside does that like, include people your age i'm no, just trying to figure no, out no 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 COVID. covid babies is like as in they was born during that time yeah like okay. that's or like right before Okay. Like all they know is inside on the mm -hmm. device, whether it was for school or not. Yeah. Like having this is probably be another way to try to get them to go do something outside. Mm -hmm. Cause like us, like we rode our bikes everywhere. We was outside every day during the summer. Mm -hmm. 
if we was playing the game, it was probably at night when we couldn't leave the house because the street lights were back on. Mm -hmm. So, like, this is, it'll definitely be a big plus for the communities. For sure. Felt, felt, felt. So, when we were uh, actually researching for these projects, one of the videos that we were watching mentioned how so overgrown shrubberies and things like that in certain neighborhoods kind of provide a screen or mm -hmm. uh, a shield for a crime to take place under mm -hmm. with those uh neighborhoods being better kept and more traffic going through those neighborhoods do y'all think that that would uh limit the crime that takes place in those neighborhoods limit no but i definitely will see the numbers going down yeah, yeah that, that's, I that's what i mean i, I, like, well, like, I kind of see that's two different things though Felt i see okay. crime with going down because i feel like you know i feel like what, what, what place like that it seems more public like this i don't think you really be like by yourself most of the time especially like right now like the summertime it's always bright it's hot i don't i don't, mm -hmm. I, don't really, I, I really see it going down i feel that that's real i honestly think what he said felt yeah honestly like they they would go down um it, w it wouldn't be as much chaos as we may think it would be mm -hmm. you know with summertime people wouldn't be on that type of time and just yeah i just i agree with him felt 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 um and it's i know the hold of my tracks are going to uh, I keep calling it that. I know that's not the actual name. No, that, that's, 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 that's just how I. That's, the, yeah, that's, the, that's just how I. You know, yeah. remember what it's about. Yeah. Um. So, I know that those are going to uh, conjoin, so to speak. Uh, and I'm using that word loosely. Uh, seven neighborhoods. Uh, will Brickline run through actual neighborhoods, or will these be like all public areas? No, it runs. It runs through neighborhoods. Got gotcha. you. Um, so. On the north end, it runs through uh, Jeff Vanderloo and Covenant Blue Grand Center. It will run through Midtown, so that Foundry area is actually mm -hmm. Midtown. St. Louis Place. St. Louis Place, right on the... Mm -hmm. It runs through Downtown and Downtown West. Mm -hmm. uh, runs through Tower Grove. No, the Grove. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forest Park Southeast. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it'll, it'll definitely run through neighborhoods. Um, in some of those areas, you know, again, from the east west, it's mostly cutting through um, business corridor. Mm -hmm. It's not that there are not people that live in those corridors, but it mostly cuts through business corridor. And then that north south cuts a lot through, you know, re more residential areas. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, I can see the arch in Forest Park, but why Fairground and uh, Tower Grove? There is a really rich history of Fairground Park. I know. Yes, yes, we know. Mm -hmm. we, we just did a we play. Did a play. Oh, I know. So I'm kind yes. of it's a segue. So felt, felt, you know, felt, when y'all do your felt, next thing. Um, but also, you know, when you think about, you know, Saint for, Saint Louis has a lot of parks. Yeah. But Fairground is one of the. It's it's again that that history, the the culture, the flavor that's there. And also, it is sort of a, it's a, it's almost, I don't want to call it a bookend because there's, mm -hmm. there's so much uh, in the city, but it is um, a, a good bookend uh, to the north side of the Greenway mm -hmm. with Tower Grove being a good bookend to that south side. So, I mean, and there, there, it's a beautiful space. Yeah. It's a beautiful space that deserves to have access, mm -hmm. you know, to it. Um, so people will come and, and use it more and love it more which could uh, yeah yeah that which could help to uh, beautify it even more because yeah. I, I agree I think Fairground Park is a beautiful space but one that could benefit from more TLC than it's mm -hmm. been getting for sure yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, I haven't been there recently but last I heard like the baseball uh it's the covered, baseball fields the that I used to play on, it's yeah, the grass. yeah, that's what I, that's what I was about to say. Like they are overgrown and whatnot. No, so it would be beautiful to still have those, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I would love, I would love to. Uh, I think, I think that's a great addition. And I'll just add a comment too that the seventy grand bus is the highest used bus route in the whole region. Mm. So it's also mm. a huge connection for people that are using transportation, alternative transportation, active transportation. So beyond just that park itself being on grand is also tying into a lot of folks that are looking for different ways to get around and being able to plug into that bus route i mean i use that bus too it's a great <laughs> but it's just one of the most well-used ones and so that's also a really great opportunity for people to be able to have more than one choice of how they want to get around mm -hmm. whether that be the greenway or the bus or getting to the train or using the greenway to get to the bus to get to the train you know who knows what you need to do or where you need to go but i think that's kind of one of those like 
double bonus where you can connect to transit too. Will the Great Way be kind of like this space that's like shared by pedestrians and bikers? Or like, will they have like, like this is the bike lane within the Great Way? Like how, how is that going to work? Yeah, so when there's room, uh -huh. we want to separate it. So there's gotcha. not always room, right? Gotcha. So a lot of the greenways around the region are shared. Everybody's on the same pathway. But when there is room, for instance, on Grand, you'll have, you know, the street and then you'll have a little a bit of the curb where you could like wait for the bus and then you've got some planters and some trees and then you've got space for people to be biking and then you've got more planters and trees then you've got space for people walking then you've got the businesses mm -hmm. so there's a huge amount of space on grand so we can really give everybody the space they need other places it will be more of a shared use path where everybody's in the same spot and just navigating um, but it just depends on where we're going and what kind of space we have to work with what did it take to like actually get legs to this project to, 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 to where uh you got what you needed in order to actually make it happen first is y'all community mm -hmm. um who said yes we want it we want to do this same thing with with Hodemont, starting out with just listening and asking people is this something do you, you know is this something that you want to see here and 95 percent of those folks that we talked to said yeah we we want to see a green here so you know the support of the community is is critical and tremendous in terms of us making a decision on how we move a project forward. And then a couple of the other things that come to mind once we have that, once we know it's a it's a yes from the people are is there some degree of support from the other like besides just the neighbors like what about the businesses along the way or the different schools or the different you know entities besides the people themselves and then there's also sort of a momentum thing where for instance the first big grant that we went after was for north grand and we got 15 million dollars from the united states department of transportation and that was a huge piece of momentum right. because if they say this thing is valuable happening here's 15 million dollars now it's going to take 250 million dollars total but still 15 is awesome but that also helps show the community we're serious about this we're not just talking about a general plan as a big idea and there's already money backing it that really starts the momentum in terms of other folks wanting to donate money other grants coming in community building that trust with community being able to progress the designs even further so it's all of those different things but those are sort of some of the i think big early momentum wins that really help get some other things going if that makes sense yeah yeah it does, it does make perfect sense uh we we uh we've actually experienced something similar with the lewis prize for music uh after that you know things really picked up for us as well so uh, yeah we know exactly what you're talking about uh were there any neighborhoods that you maybe wanted uh, Brickline or Hodemont to go through that maybe didn't make the cut or they all of them <laughs> <laughs> I mean that sounds silly but like what would everyone deserves a greenway like I wish every neighborhood could have a greenway it is it is hard that they can't they can't be everywhere I mean hopefully yeah. someday they will be yeah. um, but it feel free to throw in specifics i just genu genuinely wish they could get everywhere and you know one thing that we we didn't talk about is the fact that brickline and greenway on the tracks are part of a much larger network yeah so we have greenways in the city of st louis in st louis county and in st charles county mm -hmm. there are 18 active greenway projects and 135 miles plus built mm, to date wow. so so those two those two greenway projects that we've been talking about all this time they're, they're just they're right here exactly those yeah. they're, these are just the ones right in, well i and i can't even say city because there, there are more in the city there's the mississippi greenway that runs up from the arch all the way up to um old chain to, Rock old chain Rich briggs at riverview and 270. Mm -hmm. um river so to there's, pair yeah mm -hmm. st vincent st. greenway is in ruth porter mall park at Bolivar and del mar so it's these greenways really are it's about the connectivity right we're, we're connecting the region not just the city but we're or we're connecting the city to the region in a different and way i will also throw out that brickline greenway originally the idea we laid out 20 possible miles of routes and then the community helped to narrow it down to the first 10 mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that after 2030 we might not do a phase two and do other mm. routes too wow. so other neighborhoods could come in and again like more greenways over the years that's certainly not the end of it but it is hard to have to pick any of them yes i get that yeah i get that 100 percent. so why like so uh, this is going back to your passions this is going back to your passions what was it was what did you like kind of start off with a i really want to be connected to something that puts together green waves or like like what was it <laughs> like like how did how did where, did where did that come in at i mean for me i've been doing a gauge engagement for a long time through other jobs and 
you know, when I was looking for employment um, and heard about the position at Great Rivers Greenway and, you know, researched mm -hmm. and really started to understand what the Greenways do and the opportunities and possibilities um, moving forward for, for what the Greenways do, it just felt like the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then so this one here, um, <laughs> uh, she was part of my, my, my selection committee. So, um, greatest accomplishment to date. Hiring I was going to say, <laughs> she, she, she sold me. She sold me. I don't know, you know, if, you have, if you've ever been at a, at a job interview and, and I think I said this to you and I looked at you and I was like, well, that felt good. <laughs> I was like, that was, that was good. So yeah, no, I, you know, it's, for me, it's just really important to be in a place where there's, there is a consensus among the entire team that, you know, these greenways have, they, they, they're they amazing contributions to the region. Um, and there's, we might all come from a different perspective. We might come from the perspective of, you know, what they do around conservation or what they, I have never, I, I don't recall the last time I worked for, worked with a group of folks that were so dedicated to the mission of what Great Rivers Greenway does every day. Yeah. Mm. I agree. And I, I'll just throw out, I also, I wasn't even looking for jobs, but somebody sent me the job description and I, I do, I'm in communications. So it was a honestly a pretty boring job description. It was like, do the website, do the newsletter, you know, like just very run of the mill stuff. I was not intrigued. It was not selling me on leaving my current position. Um, but once I started talking to a couple of people that were more involved, then I started to realize, oh, so this is about giving people transportation choices. I'm super into that. I didn't always have a car. I don't always use a car to get around. So I think giving people choices is a big deal to me. And then they're like, oh, and it's also good for the environment. And I was like, okay, well, that's, yep. I also care about that. And then they're like, oh, there's this like economic development part of it. That's like really helping the region be stronger. I'm like, okay, well, so, yeah. And then they're like, oh, and then it's connecting communities together and helping people be healthy. And, and I'm just like, well, but that's like all the things, you know, like I just that felt like so many different things. And to Chinese's point, like people in our office, some people are like diehard plant people. I don't know anything about plants, like, but yay, you know, great, but I don't have that expertise. Some people are really into economic development. I don't know anything about how to create affordable housing or what to do, you know, but they do. And that's awesome. And I love that variety and that diversity of background and skill set and the diversity of the impact we're having. Yes. Right. So like when I first, honestly, this is not silly, but when I first looked at the website, I thought there were like five different departments. Like somebody was doing healthy communities. Somebody was doing transportation. Yeah. Somebody. And then finally I was like, oh, they just build greenways and the greenways do all those things. <laughs> like it took me a while to understand it. But once I did, I was really excited about it because it wasn't just one little thing. It's like city building. It's community building. It's like reimagining how our community can work. And that is very exciting and never gets boring. 100%. Um, what's something that you guys would want uh, our listeners to know that we maybe haven't touched on yet? I would say, first of all, that there's always opportunities to get involved with those two projects, but also with the Greenways overall. Um, go to our website, uh, www.greatriversgreenway.org and you know learn about all the different ways that you can get connected with the greenways and with the work that we that we all do um, together um, there's also lots of fun events <laughs> on our greenways fun like and clean up trash clean up on saturday saturday <laughs> june 1st <laughs> saturday june 1st 9 to oh, I think 9 to 11 on north land actually we'll be gotcha. out there um picking up trash um so there's there's lots of things that you can you can do um and if you have not been on a greenway i would encourage you to come out and explore there's lots to, there's lots to see there's just lots to do do y'all have a favorite greenway? Mm. <laughs> or is that like picking children? <laughs> it changes all the time, but I'm going to mix it up since we've been talking about Brickline and Hodemont so much. I'll give you a different one. I really like the Maylene Greenway um, in Bell Fountain County Park. Um, and particularly because there are really, really tall trees there. And I really like feel I really like that vibe of just like shady, huge, like huge cottonwood trees. That's what I'll say today. <laughs> and gotcha, one of gotcha. my favorites is the Sunset Greenway in oh. Florissant, uh, which is right at Sunset Park, which actually traverses down to the Missouri River. And it has great uh, sunset views, <laughs> given the name. Um, so it's, it's a pretty cool park. But one of my favorite spaces now uh, is the Old Channel Rocks Park. 
So there's a greenway, the Mississippi Greenway goes to the old Chain of Rocks Park. And then the, the uh, bridge, the Chain of Rocks Bridge goes over to Illinois. And that is one of my favorite spaces. It just opened on April 16th of this year. Actually, we're going to be having some cool events. We're going to be doing uh, sunset and snow cones. Mm -hmm. Three snow <laughs> so, cones at sunset, just yeah. like it sounds. It's a, it's a uh, you know, so the, it's a it's a beautiful space. Um, it's interesting to actually learn about the history of, of that area. It's really cool to walk across that bridge and land yourself in Illinois and and watch the Mississippi roaring beneath beneath you and it's just a, yeah it's just a beautiful space felt 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 fire fire they sound beautiful I um know for sure that I've been on greenways but I didn't know they were greenways yep mm -hmm. I didn't know they were greenways but um but no I love it I love it um I do want to uh open the floor if there are any more questions from the audience before we close out I do want to shout out really quick uh -huh. as people are coming up a couple mm -hmm. of uh, members of our community advisory committee got you, for got the you. North Grand. Sure Ms. Thing, Audrey sure Ellerman, thing. who is a Covenant Blue Grand Center resident. Yes, she oh. has been a champion um, for her community, but also for this project. And then Officer James Harris, who I know y'all know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Saw all the dad uh, giving and all the yeah. things. Y'all bust a move. Yeah. <laughs> so we we appreciate um, these two. They have been at the table with us for. I mean, and we're not. So when we when we engage, we don't just like do a thing and then go away. Mm -hmm. We're talking some years, like yeah. years, and they keep coming back. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> they keep mm -hmm. coming back right. because they know that. I mean, I, and they can speak for themselves. But this is important. It's important to them. It's important for the community, um, and they want to make certain that community has an opportunity to be part of this process. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Well, of course, I'm excited because it's in coming through my neighborhood. And a shout out to the Stitch. Thank you. Because they're in my neighborhood and I came in and thanked them and told them, the Greenway, you, you need to go talk to these folks. <laughs> you know, I'll take credit for that. But um, I have to give a shout out to these two ladies because they are really, really passionate about making sure that they're engaged. You know, and, and the more they talk about it, the more I talk about it to the neighborhood. And I got them hyped and excited. So I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to looking at our neighborhood and choosing us. Because we really appreciate that. And also, Susan, for choosing us, Covenant Blue Grand Center. Mm, thank you. Follow that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We love being neighbors. neighbors with you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> It has to be a lot of gardeners to take care of this this long stretch of greenway, right? We have a ton of partners actually. So the green the way we were set up originally was that we would build the greenways and, and then the city or the people who own the land would take care of them, which is both a wonderful idea and a complicated hot mess in the St. Louis region. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we have to work with a lot of different partners, but then we also jump in and help with a lot of different folks. So because we everybody deserves a greenway, not just communities that have money to take care of them. So we feel really strongly about making sure that every community has what they need to take care of it which may not be what they already have in a parks department so we're jumping in helping out we might get volunteer gardeners we might get an adopt a greenway program we might hire a private company to go do it we might help ourselves and then a lot of those partners towns campuses other whoever the greenway is also help as much as they can mm. and then we're thoughtful about what we what we plant um yes. native, things that are native to the community so that you know so that we don't plant something and then it's dead three weeks later right it's some tropical acclimate. plant that isn't supposed right. to be in missouri yeah, yeah. yeah. right yeah. want to make sure everything can acclimate to the environment so that's makes something sense. else we think about makes sense so what are you guys is uh current plans or goals within the, the greenway in 2024 hmm. Hmm. i mean the current current yeah, the current yeah. goal um for me or organ well for me is uh this this we talked a bit about the north connector which is the segment that comes from fairground you know down grand we are going to be going into construction early next year okay and mm. so my current goal is to get the community excited about the fact that the greenway is it's coming um again there are some sections that are built but this is going to be you know a major infrastructure improvement coming down north grand avenue and i just want people to be excited about it so my goal is to make sure we get the word out um again get people involved and get people excited so that uh the next i don't know, let's see in the next maybe year and a half we've got new infrastructure that we can all enjoy and fine, i would fine. say probably my 2024 goal 
two things. One is we're totally overhauling our website. <laughs> and so that is just a big project regardless. And we want, really want to make sure that the map is more, is a better and easier to use so that people can use that on their phone if they're out trying to find where does this Greenway go? You know, how can I, where can I hop on? How, how does it work? Um, and then the other piece is that next year will be our 25th birthday. So we were mm. created by a vote of the people in the year 2000. So people voted to create this. And so next year will be a time to celebrate that. But also that's a good opportunity to just, again, get the word out in a different way to make sure people know. Sean C mentioned earlier, St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and St. Charles County. It's 120 towns. It's 1,200 square miles. That's like the whole state of Rhode Island or Dang. Yosemite National Park. It's a oh. huge chunk of land that we're trying to connect together and we have 135 miles and we're not there yet but we're because it's going to be like five six hundred <laughs> it's yeah, going to be decades be yeah. but trying to figure out how we want to celebrate with community next year and also make sure people know the greenways are for them you know and continue to do that listening to figure out what people need and how it's going okay wow beautiful beautiful anybody else got a question all right we good okay. let me stop did you just say no, you got one? Or you don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody under the sound. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Stitchcast Studio. I've been your host, Brandon Lewis. We hope that you found this insightful, that you've learned, that you that you that you just walk away from this podcast knowing something that you didn't know when you sat down. Uh, that being said, uh, if you're in between the ages of 16 and 24 and wondering how you can join our Stitchcast family, or if you just want to know what we have going on next, I encourage you to go to storystitches.org where we have more information than you can ever handle. I promise you. And it's absolutely lovely. If you want to join Story Stitches itself as an organization, whether you sing, dance, rap, poetry, uh, uh, if you're an artist, a painter, illustrator, uh, if you're interested in videography, photography, uh, and you're in between the ages of 16 and 25, we think we might have a place for you. So we absolutely encourage you to come and sign up to uh, apply it's completely free to apply it's completely free to register and we'd love to see you that being said i want to thank y'all so much for tuning in i'm your host brandon lewis signing off yep it's been great yes (laughs) (laughs) just say bye bro can't get it right out trees all bro we out here with our guests emma and shaughnessy thanks for having us thank you thank you guys and we out St. Louis Story Stitchers. Stitchcast Studio Live is supported in part by an award from the National Endowment for the Arts on the web at arts.gov. Story Stitchers is supported in part by the Lewis Prize for Music's 2021 Accelerator Award. The mission of the Lewis Prize is to partner with leaders who create positive change by investing in young people through music. Stitchcast Studio, St. Louis Story Stitchers, and the center is supported by Kressburg Arts Foundation as a resident organization. Thank you for listening. They say who that, but you already knew that. That beat them story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches, story stitches.